In the previous videos, we talked about setting up our quad shooter application, a Spring Boot application. We talked about setting up our application dot properties where we set up the database data source, URL, password, JDBC connection, SMTP, uh, etc., etc. And in this video, we'll talk about uh, creating our API. So we'll talk about how it can actually create a REST API, which will help us schedule those jobs, and then we will schedule the jobs using Postman. So in this particular video, we'll talk about the DTOs or the data transfer object that uh, we'll be using to uh, communicate with uh, with the user and quads. So let's get started. So first we need a new package. So let's go to, let's go here and create a quad scheduler dot payload. So this package is going to uh, consist of the DTOs. So we have a re request DTO and a response DTO and these DTO will talk to the user about the uh, type of values that are needed to be entered. So the, for example, the email or the subject of the email, the body, uh, date, time, time zone, etc. So we'll be taking up this uh, request uh, from the user and then scheduling our emails via quads. So for that we need to have a DTO or a way for the data to be transferred from the user to our application server. So let's create a Java class called as email request. So now we need to add a few uh, fields uh, for our attributes for our class email request. So let's start with uh, the uh, the most obvious one. So we have at the rate email and at the rate not empty. So these annotations make sure that uh, our email, so private string email. Uh, make sure that our email is always uh, in the form of an email and is never empty. So we just have to make sure that we have the right class for that. So that you know we don't have to worry about the validation which has to be done on email, uh, checking whether there is an at the rate or there's a dot com or dot in. So all of that is being handled by the email annotation. And yeah, of course, our email cannot be empty. So that's why we have a not empty annotation on top of it. Next is going to be the subject. So the subject also cannot be empty. There are emails which are being sent without subjects, but uh, those are usually marked as spam or they are not trusted. So we'll make sure that our application has a subject. Again, a private string subject. So next up is the body. So again, we don't want an empty body. So we'll make sure that a body also is not empty. And this is going to be body. Next comes in the date time. So the date time at which the email was sent. And for that we have a not null. So it's different. And private local date time. We have the date time. And let's keep importing our classes as we go. Next up is the zone ID or the time zone of the current place you're in. So if you're sending an email from India to say, let's say Europe, then we have to have the appropriate time zones uh, uh, mapped at both the places. And this particular field takes care of that. Again, this cannot be null because this will be there for all the emails that you sent. And private zone ID time zone and yeah so this deals with the email request or the request which the user sends to the server and this will contain the email uh, the email to uh, the per the, per the sender's email so for example if I'm sending it to test at the rate of test.com then that is added here next is the subject which is the topic of your email uh, next comes in the body the date time at which it was sent and the time zone uh, from which it was sent. So this is basically what is going to be inside our email request and let's add some setter and getter functions here. So we'll do a setter and we'll also do a getter. So make sure that you download uh, the Lombok, L-O-M-B-O-K uh, plugin from here. So just go to uh, files, oh, sorry, not files. I will go to preferences. And let's wait for it to come up.
and here go to plugins and then download Lombok. And Lombok is going to help you with all the annotations that are required, uh, which make your uh, life like 10 times easier. So you can just go type hello mbok. And yeah, uh, so I have done, installed it. So if you haven't, then you can install Lombok and then you, know, you can play with all of those, all of these annotations uh, for your project. Okay, so this is our email request. The way we send it to the server. Now we need a response. So for that, let's create another payload. So new Java class email response. So this is the response we get from the server after we send our request. So this will consist of some uh, variables such as uh, success, whether the email was sent successfully or not, the job ID uh, of the job, the job group, and the message we get back from the email response. So let's create this now. So first we have our fields. So we'll be having private Boolean success. Next is private string job ID. Private, oh sorry. Make sure you spell it right. And make sure you spell it right again. You have job group. So each quad's job is uh, uniquely identified uh, with job ID and job group. So you need both of them to have a unique job. Uh, one, uh, they can be multiple job IDs inside one single job group. So we'll talk about that later when we come to it. Next comes in the private string message. We get back. Let's give it a nice name. And next we have the constructors for our email response. So email response billion success and string message. Let's create the constructor to so this start success equal to success the start message equal to message. So a simple constructor, nothing complicated. We'll see why we need the constructors later on when we create our API, but we need two types of constructors here. So let's create them. This one's going to have Boolean success string job ID string job group and string sh the start success again will do success now as we write this out uh, we have to make sure that our variable names are rightly uh, written so make sure that you have the correct variable names and there is no uh, spelling mistakes and all of them is readable pretty readable should not be something which is weird uh, to read or to understand. So only by seeing the code, a person should be able to understand what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, try to minimize the amount of comments you write. So make sure that the comments actually tell you why the code was written and not what the code is. So a comment like this here would not make sense that this is a constructor. This is not uh, a, com a comment which is helping us understand anything about the code, right? So something which can be uh, changed here is that we can write this constructor helps with so and so. So this is a way of actually writing good comments uh, when you're creating a very big project uh, and also to make sure that if other people contribute to it, it is readable. So make sure that you write comments that explain the why behind the code and not the what. Okay, so last is the message. So this dot message is equal to message. Okay, great. So we now have all the uh, fields ready, constructor ready, and this is going to be the response to our uh, request that we send back to the server. 
and we get whether the email was successfully sent or the job was uh, created successfully or not, the message we get back and the constructor that are used for it. So uh, the next thing is going to be the controller or the uh, endpoints that handle or work with Postman or any other application that deals with API calls. So let's create our controller now. So let's go to a new package, call it web. The web is going to control the API endpoint. So let's create a Java class for that. It's going to be an email scheduler controller. Now this particular class will control all of our uh, APIs. So we'll have the logic behind the APIs. And then in the next video, we'll talk about uh, the job detail and the triggers that we implement to create the email scheduler controller. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.